It's that joy-stealing sentiments and emotions and thoughts that we are bound by. Think for yourselves. Don't just believe it because I said it, or Swamiji says it, or the book says it. Think of it. This is the experiment. The experiment's happening here. Is this true? Try it out. Think big. You know those Indian movies where the villain always does, you know, a certain gesture, like, you know, like Austin Powers, you know, he always goes like that. So that will be in the discourse of I'll always say, think big, or just try it. That'll be that typical response that I always offer. And you don't get that joke because nobody watches Las Vegas. <laughs> and you don't get that joke either because you don't know Aziz Ansari. <laughs> and he is hilarious. Joy is our nature, and there is endless shruti, yukti, and anubhuti that indicates that. Scriptures and master, masters, logic and experience. Endless reasons, logic, rationale, teachings that indicate we are joyous by nature. And if that's the case, why do we still suffer then? Why aren't we smiling all the time? Why aren't we like Lord Krishna? Why aren't we like Swami Chinamayananda? Why can't we sleep at night when we hit the bed? Why can't we get up in the morning when we're supposed to? Why are we still suffering? It's not that we lack knowledge. I know most of the people in this room, most of the people in this room don't lack knowledge. What we lack is wisdom. The difference between knowledge and wisdom is wisdom is actually doing it. This is where we lack. We don't believe enough in our scriptures and masters, in logic, and in experience. We don't believe enough. And so we don't experience our true nature. We believe otherwise. And so we experience finite limitations, sorrow. And that's why I very much appreciate, again, this camp theme. Just try it. Think big. See if we can believe. Wasn't that President Obama's uh, campaign something like that? We, we can change or something? We can, right? We can? Yes, 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 we, can. yes we can. This belief that I'm talking about <laughs> is not a blind process. No one's saying, okay, you know, this is a cult that everyone believes in, do what I say. The exact opposite is being shared there. Question, think about it, reflect on it. This is not a blind process. This belief requires effort on many levels. Physical effort, mental effort, social effort, emotional effort, financial effort, intellectual effort. We have to exert to develop this belief. One's not just born with it, it needs to be inculcated, it needs to be developed, especially for this group of people. When I teach, the visheshita or the specialty of the Chinmai mission is knowledge. And people tell me, you should teach more about bhakti yoga. You should talk about bhakti yoga. And I say, yes, but not to this group of people. We don't have that natural love for the Lord. And when I say we, I'm just definitely talking about myself. That natural love for the Lord is not there. I need to know about the Lord for me to love the Lord. My parents were not like that. Love the Lord? Deal. I'll do it. But not me. I need to know what I'm loving. I need to know why I'm loving it. Efforts required to develop this bhakti yoga, to develop this devotion, to develop this vision. And if the effort is there, the results will come. It has to come. As Nitin and Jatin were talking about, when we're here, we're happy. You know, Shivam is a super camper. He was in the January retreat, then he came to the March retreat, now he's at this retreat, and I'm pretty sure he's coming to the DC retreat too. He's a super camper. Because he derives that joy from there. If he didn't derive that joy, why would he come? He, he's not getting anything. He can buy the spork himself. He can buy the shower time for himself. Right? It's the joy that's derived. 
When the effort is there, the result will come. It has to come. And so I leave this question with all of you. Are you happier when you're here or when you leave here? I think for most the answer is yes, we are happier. But then it goes away. Because we believe while we're here, and then when we leave this ashram, we start believing otherwise. That belief needs to be worked on. And I say this is a process, and this process requires great effort. The result, though, is immediate. Like knowledge. Knowledge is immediate. But understanding the knowledge requires time and effort. If I have a mirror here, and I can't see myself, cleaning the mirror requires effort, but once that's gone, that reflection is immediate. In the same way, knowledge of our true nature is immediate, but that knowledge can't register because we lack purity of mind. It's covered. And if it was uncovered, when the Guru says, Dattamasi, we immediately respond with, Aham Brahmasi. The best student just hears it once, shravan, and game over. But if one's not that student, then we need mana, reflection. So the Guru says, Tattvamasi. And the Shisha reflects on it and says, I am Atma Brahma. This soul is Brahma. And if the student still hasn't appreciated that, then the student needs to meditate. And then finally the student says, Aham Brahmasi. But that knowledge is immediate. It's the process to understand the knowledge that requires time, effort, sadhana. This leads us into our study of Upadesha Sara. Upadesha Sara is a powerful, comprehensive, and simple scripture. Powerful, comprehensive, simple. What this scripture does is it teaches us how to purify our mind. And when the mind is pure, what happens? We realize we're not the mind. Only when they're pure, this purity of mind is there do we realize that we're not the mind. It's very much like the process of saying Hari. Why do we say Hari? During a typical camp day, we'll probably say it 75 times. Why do we do it? Why do we say Hariyo? It's Hari, is the name of Lord Narayan. Hari comes from the root R Harati, to steal. So is Narayana a thief then? Yes, Narayana is a thief. What do we want him to steal? He steals our spiritual ignorance. And when that hurry, when that spiritual ignorance is gone, what remains? Oh, that's what we say, hurry. Please, Narayana, take my spiritual ignorance. And when he does, all that remains is oh. When we have purity of mind, then we realize that we are oh. That we are what we want to be. And this text, the scripture, will take us on how to purify our mind and then ultimately realize that I'm not this mind, that I'm not impure, that I'm unchanging, unlimited, unconditional joy, glorious peace. That's who I am. Like I said, we don't lack knowledge. You know, many of us have been going to Chimanishi camps for decades. We don't lack knowledge, we lack wisdom. We have this thought, and it's like the mind cannot penetrate through the barrier to understand. This is understanding, and we have this barrier here, and the mind is trying to get there. It sees it, but it just can't get there. Those impurities prevent us from getting there, like a robot, like a force field. And so we need to develop that purity of mind. Understand this. 